This is Atsumi Yoshikibo. On October 22, 2014, she would find herself a long way from her home in Japan, walking along an unfamiliar road called the Ingram Trail on the outskirts of Yellowknife, Canada. The weather was turning poor quickly, as the temperature was already below freezing, and even though she had on a thick pink parka, beanie, mittens, black pants, and white boots, her gear wasn't ideal for the kind of cold that was blanketing the city. Yet the biting chill and the dangers of being alone on such a secluded road didn't bother Atsumi. She was consumed with the beauties of the wilderness, with a camera out ready to preserve these very memories. But this was just the scenic route on her journey today. She had made up her mind that she was going to see the northern lights, and she knew that she was in the perfect place to see it. All she needed to do was get to higher elevations for a better seat in the house. A truck approaches from the distance, and on a passing glance, the driver, Carrie Reel, would be the last known person to see at Sumi alive. Carrie Reel. She was an officer for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. That day, as she was heading back to work from lunch, she couldn't help but notice the petite, cutely attired Asian woman walking along the rocky path. A hard route in general, but under bad weather, it was outright treacherous, and Carrie heavily considered stopping to make sure everything was okay. But the closer she got, she couldn't see any signs that this person was in danger. The woman appeared perfectly comfortable in her attire and even had a camera out. So Carrie's alarm bells died down, she minded her own business, and drove on to work. But she would soon wish she had stopped, because the woman walking that trail that afternoon would become the biggest story in the coming days. A story that would of course find its way back to Atsumi's homeland of Japan. It started as just a minor note on the daily news, but soon became a major headliner, as the public was gripped by the story of a Japanese woman traveling alone in Canada, going missing. Japan would be in contact with Canadian authorities for updates while making sure that Atsumi was being properly searched for. But concerning that search, depending on who you asked, it was either a feeble effort on the RCMP's part or a well-investigated one. You'll get to decide when we discuss the efforts. But before we continue, I would like to make a quick toast to our first ever Patreon member, Invertablade. Your support means the world to this channel. A channel where a whopping 96.3% of our viewers don't even subscribe. So here's to you, good sir, for keeping our spirits up. So who is Atsumi Yoshikibo? She was born on November 3rd of 1968 in a very small countryside city in Japan called Uto. After graduating medical school for psychiatry, she would start her career in her family's clinic. Eventually, Atsumi and her boyfriend at the time felt they outgrew the small confines of a small city and set their sights on the big city of Kumamoto. But things soured a bit throughout the next 10 years or so as she broke up with her boyfriend and a couple of clinics that she worked at would close down. She would lose another job when she clashed with her boss, but eventually she would start her own psychiatry business, one that made house calls. Colleagues and patients who had a chance to get to know her described her fondly. Because of her kindness and her great warm smile for everyone, she was very popular amongst those around her. She would give staff and patients gifts, such as little stuffed animals, hoping they would find comfort in them. It was making people happy that she found fulfillment, one doctor would say. Physically, she is described as a beautiful, petite woman standing 5 foot 2 inches tall and weighing all of 100 pounds. A funny thing about Asumi was, she rather liked being alone. The Japanese when they travel, usually it's in a group, but with Atsumi, she preferred to travel by herself only, her family would say. That was no different when Atsumi calls a travel agency in Toronto and books a ticket with them for the 17th of October to Yellowknife, Canada. We can't be sure if she mentions that she wanted to see the Northern Lights, but regardless, the agent taking the call should know a Japanese person booking a flight to Yellowknife is almost 100% going there to see the lights, because the Japanese believe that to witness the Aurora Borealis in person was considered good luck, and if you were to conceive a baby underneath it, well, your child will be blessed with good looks, intellect, and good fortune. Well, this explains everything, Killian. 
We conceived you under the southern lights. <laughs> you can say we were Aurora with Cialis. Fuck! Yellowknife's claim to fame is being scientifically the perfect place to see the Aurora Borealis. So any tourists coming through are there mainly to see it and 20% of those tourists are from Japan. So it would be confusing or just greed that the agent didn't inform Atsumi that mid-October was not a good time to go as the northern lights rarely ever showed during this season. Atsumi got her ticket and October 17th of 2014 she landed in Yellowknife and checked into the Explorer Hotel. The following day, she went to the North Frontier Visitor Center to purchase a tour of the Northern Lights, only to learn that the tours were all closed for the season. And here we can safely assume that Asumi was not told this beforehand. So is there a Canadian travel agent somewhere feeling a pang of guilt? Maybe, but that's digressing. So after her disappointment about the tours, Asumi appeared to try to make the best of her trip. She is recorded on CCTV in a popular souvenir shop called Gallery of the Midnight Sun, purchasing two coffee mugs and having a friendly chat with the clerk. The workers that day said that she was a very nice person, upbeat, smiling as she shopped. It wouldn't be until three days later, on the 22nd, that cameras would capture at Sumi again, this time leaving the hotel at approximately 9.15 a.m. And it was on this day that she would later be seen walking up Ingram Trail. On October 27th, five days after Atsumi leaves the premise, the hotel realizes that Atsumi had not checked out. They went up to her room where they discovered her room nice and camped, luggage neatly packed as though she was ready for the flight back home. Shortly after, the police were notified. RCMP are continuing air and ground searches in and around Yellowknife for a missing Japanese tourist. 45-year-old Atsumi Yoshikubo was last seen more than a week ago. She was walking along Highway 4 toward the Ingram Trail. Crews are looking in the wooded areas within walking distance from the Explorer Hotel. Yoshikubo's family spoke to Japanese media. They say she's a doctor who often traveled alone. Her younger brother says he's at a loss for words and wants her to return safely. Police held a news conference earlier today. They say there's no indication of foul play so far. Detectives were immediately concerned once they uncovered the footage of Itsumi leaving the hotel because the weather at the time had gone way below freezing, minus 14 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus 26 degrees Celsius. During this time in Yellowknife, snowfall was not heavy, which presented its own dangers. It made the terrain icy as well as swampy, and the snowy patches could hide holes or other dangerous surprises, perilous for a trained hiker. A nightmare for the inexperienced. Search teams combed over Yellowknife. Volunteers would go along the trail searching hidden areas that were blind spots for helicopters. This would go on for three days straight until, on October 31st, the police abruptly decided to announce that they had searched all of Yellowknife, a clear indication that their hope of finding her alive was waning. A couple of days after that, the search was called off altogether, and Itsumi Yoshikibo was presumed dead. They released this statement. Our uh, police investigation has determined that uh, Atsumi Yoshikubo is now considered a missing person presumed dead. And uh, our investigation has also determined that she arrived in Yellowknife with the plan to go into the wilderness alone and become a missing person and that she took steps to avoid being found. How they determined Atsumi's motives and the steps she took to avoid detection were not disclosed to the Canadian public, but it was relayed to the Japanese government, and in respect to the Yoshikibo family, it was never made public. Back in Japan, her grieving family would learn the sad news that the search for Atsumi was called off, and then a strange letter, supposedly written by Atsumi, started circulating the newspapers. The letter was said to have been sent to one of Atsumi's female friends, as conveyed by the foreign ministry, and was described as a suicide letter, which drew out a plan of ending her own life by running away from her family and into the wilderness. But her brother, Kenji Yoshikibo, does not believe the note proved Atsumi's intentions, doubting even the authenticity of the note, since he had not heard about it, but only through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and gossip columns. He pointed out 
out that people planning a suicide would not be buying souvenirs. And if a person truly wanted to die in another country, why bother booking the flight back home? But it's also important to mention that Asumi was actually estranged from her family, which included her brother Kenji, for the past 10 years at that point. So they wouldn't necessarily know what was going through Asumi's mind when she landed in Canada, what mental issues she might have been battling. When the RCMP first ended their search for Atsumi, it was not well received by the public. Her disappearance sat in the minds of the good people of Yellowknife and would finally boil over on June 5th of 2015. A second round of volunteers set out to look for Atsumi once again. Every path was retraversed and they would turn over the same stones again. But again, it was as though Atsumi was never even there. Not even an article of clothing, just nothing. Three months later, on August 31st, a hiker came across a pink parka a mile or so outside of town. It appeared to be the same one that she was wearing in the footage. When the hiker contacted the police, they also found bone fragments in and around the area. It was sent to forensics and it wouldn't be until the following year on April 14th of 2016 that the bone fragments would finally confirm that it was at Sumi. Here are three popular theories about Atsumi's disappearance. The first being there's a lot of wilderness surrounding Yellowknife, and with that, a whole lot of wildlife. If she was unfortunate enough to run across something like a bear, where they were known to forage around the city at times, chances are that encounter would be fatal, and her jacket and her remains would probably be scavenged and scattered by other forest creatures. The second was that she was picked up by someone. It's pertinent to note that besides the beauties that surrounded Yellowknife, there was the dark inner turmoils of the city itself. At the time, the community was dealing with increasing alcoholism, violent crimes and poverty were all on the rise. In a city of just 21,000 people, you could say a few bad apples could really taint a lot of that barrel. So did one or a few of those bad apples happen to pass a beautiful Asian woman that day just walking down a secluded road? Even though one vehicle hadn't stopped that day, maybe another vehicle did. And the third would be, just as the police had figured, that Atsumi had come to Yellowknife to end it all herself. Here's what I like to think happened, Dad. I think that Atsumi had romanticized what the Northern Lights represented in her life. She wasn't just walking for a better view. She was slowly making peace with her family, peace with whatever darkened her days, to a place where she could surround herself with the basic beauties of nature in order to say goodbye. That she would no longer be a burden anymore. I like to think that she was able to perch herself somewhere high, having the best seat in the house. And I love to think that Mother Nature knew why she was there. And for Atsumi's eyes only, the northern lights began to dance. So what do you think happened to Atsumi? Write your thoughts in the comments, because I'd love to read it. So at this point, all we could do is speculate. I love you. Even after that awful Cialis joke, I'll be back again soon with another story. Good evening, I'm Randy Henderson. We begin tonight in Yellowknife, where many are questioning why the RCMP called off the search for a missing Japanese tourist. Yesterday, the RCMP said Atsumi Yoshikubo is presumed dead, and they have evidence that shows she wanted to disappear. Now, many are asking what that evidence is. And as Aaron Broman reports, some are determined to find the answers themselves. Our investigation has determined that Atsumi Yoshikubo um, came to Yellowknife with a plan to go into the wilderness and become a missing person. For many in Yellowknife, that statement has left too many unanswered questions. Sonia Daigle helped rally the community to find Atsumi Yoshikubo before RCMP called the official search off yesterday. We need some answer. Like, you can't just go and tell everybody that this is what, how it happened and this is what happened without giving us why. Many people in town agree that after weeks of searching and wondering what happened to the 45-year-old, the RCMP's explanation isn't quite enough. Well, what information does the RCMP have to indicate that she wanted to get lost by herself? Like, the, yeah, it's like, 
Did, did, did she want to get lost? Well, they should uh, be telling us what they're doing, right? They should be, you know, they're, they're funded to do that, right? Maybe keep on looking for something like that and in, in certain levels, I, I think. Priority one, priority two, priority three levels and uh, and just not give up. Snow, snow is coming on and, uh, you know, there's still hope. If they're suspecting that she is past, give us some answer. Did you find a shoe? Did you find a hat? RCMP say the evidence they have that Yoshikubo wanted to disappear and is likely dead is private and confidential. And while the official search is called off, they still hope to find her remains. But even tonight, when Daigle finishes her shift, she's going to go back out to Highway 4, one of the last spots where Yoshikubo was seen, in hopes of finding something. It's a shock to the community saying that he actually planned to be dead and she didn't want to be found. Well, there's, there's, we need some answer. And so is he, her family. The RCMP say they won't provide any more information at this time as the investigation is still ongoing. Aaron Broman, CBC News, Yellowknife.